Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Ad Mail. This is Adam Bergman, founder and CEO of IRA Financial. I'm here to help you find the answers to the most frequently asked questions from my clients about self-directed retirement accounts. If you want to learn more, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on social media. Just search IRA Financial. Hi everyone and welcome to another episode of Ad Mail. I'm Adam Bergman, tax attorney and founder of IRA Financial. On today's episode, we're going to be discussing three amazing questions from three super smart individuals and going to tackle a wide gamut of topics, one involving solo 401k contributions, another for doing a employer rollover from a 401k and third one doing a non-recourse real estate deal in an IRA. So really, uh, I think this is going to be a very interesting episode and um, you know, buckle up. Let's get right to it. So the first question is from Allison W. of Lewiston, Maine. And Allison wants to know, I want to make employer contributions to my solo 401k plan for 2021. Do I have to make them in 21 or can I contribute them in 2022? So great question, Allison. And the way the employer contribution rules work is you technically have until your tax return is filed. So if you're a sole proprietor or single member LLC, when your 1040 is filed. If you are a LLC partnership, 1065. If you're a C or S corp, it's an 1120 or an 1120S. So basically, you can make employer contributions in 22 for the 21 taxable year, so long as you make them before you file your return for the 21 year in 2022. Now, if you treat them as 21 contributions, that's fine. You just need to keep doing that going forward. So in 2022, if you want to make con employer contributions in 23 for 2022, that's fine. You want to keep the same system. If you start changing it up and making the employer contributions in 23, but really treating them for 23 instead of 22, things get a little bit out of flux. So just make sure that if you keep to one system where you're doing it in 22 for 21 and 23 for 22. You just keep doing that going forward. And that will make sure that the 5,500EZ, if you have to file one, if you have over $250,000 in plan assets, um, follow and are um, essentially identical to what you report on your tax return, which uh, will make your life easier if you ever get audited. So thank you for that question, Allison. Really good one. The second question on today's episode it's from Wendy T. of Richmond, Virginia. Wendy wants to know, I'm in the process of rolling funds from my employer 401k plan at IRA Financial. Should the check be issued to me or IRA Financial? Well, great question, Wendy. And um, I wanted to you know, present Wendy's question because I get a lot of questions. So does my team about rollovers from a 401k. There's about $500 billion rolled over from pension plans slash defined contribution plans uh, each year. Okay, two IRAs. So it's the biggest source of, of IRA transfer wealth is from rollovers. Now, generally, rollovers are tax free, right? When you move them from a 401k, 403b, 457. So long as you leave your job, you're over the age of 59 and a half, generally you have access to your 401k or defined contribution plans. And then you can roll them to an IRA tax free. And there's two methods there's a direct way, Wendy, where the check is issued to IRA Financial Trust Company for the benefit of Wendy T. IRA. That's the most common, it could be a wire, it could be a check. If the check is cut to you individually, Wendy, that's a problem, okay? This is an issue that some people unfortunately fall themselves, find themselves into, and it becomes a 20% withholding nightmare. Technically, you're allowed to ask for the funds in your name, and then you have 60 days to roll them into an IRA. The problem with that is generally the employer, if you don't um, notify them otherwise, will withhold a 20% clip. And then it's up to you to make up that 20% to get that money back in your plan. Because if you don't, guess what? The 20% is gone. Even if it's a direct rollover, you've essentially lost those funds and they're treated as a distribution. So um, it becomes problematic. It's generally done right, but make sure your employer knows uh, and that's why I always tell clients, if you want to do a rollover at IRA Financial, open an account first because you're going to want to provide your former employer or the financial institution associated with the 401k, your IRA info, the institution, IRA Financial Trust Company, the 
account number, right? The address or wire info. This way it all gets done custodian to custodian and it's tax free versus if they cut the check in your name, Wendy, you could potentially have 20% withholding tax issues and it becomes an absolute nightmare. Plus you can only do that once every 12 months. Uh, whereas direct rollovers, direct transfers, you can do in as, as many times as you wish. There's no limitation. So it's a very important point. It's a great question. Um, I just actually spoke to someone a couple of days ago uh, who had this issue happen where their employer um, through their third party administrator just, I guess, screwed up, got wrong information. And they wrote the person the check and the person like, it, was, it was during the summer and they didn't know what was going on. They were on vacation or oh, whatever. And they missed the 60 days. And now they're fighting with their former employer because they're having them, um, they want them to take the responsibility of, of this potential taxable distribution. And they're saying, no, we cut you the check. It's your possession. You had 60 days. You should have figured this out. The client said, well, I didn't want to do it this way. It should have been direct. It should have never gone to me. So if you can avoid all that by just doing a direct rollover right to an IRA, so open the IRA first, and then you provide all the IRA account info and have the check issued to the IRA fin to the you know, custodian, let's say it's Vanguard uh, for the benefit of the IRA or IRA financial for the benefit of your IRA, and it will get done tax-free. Third, final question on today's podcast is from YouTube. And this individual wants to know, I have a real estate deal that I want to use my IRA, but will also need a loan. How available is a non-recourse loan? Is it really a viable option? So this individual knows the rules that when you borrow money that you want to use with your IRA, the loan must be a non-recourse loan. And a non-recourse loan is a loan you do not personally guarantee. So if you go get a mortgage for a home, that's generally a recourse mortgage. Meaning if you don't pay that loan, they obviously could take your house. They can also go after you into personal bankruptcy. A non-recourse loan means the lender's only recourse is the underlying asset, the property. They cannot go after you personally. So clearly, the reason that a non-recourse loan must be used in the IRA context is, unfortunately, the IRS rules under 4975C1B state that an IRA owner cannot personally guarantee an obligation of the IRA. Good rule, probably not, but you know, no one asked me when, when these rules were created you know, 35 years ago or 40, I should say more, more than that, 40, 47, 48 years ago. So those are the rules. So it's gotta be a non-recourse loan. And again, the lender is taking more risk. So generally a non-recourse loan is gonna cost you more. It's gonna cost a few more points because the lender has more risk potential because all they can do is take the underlying asset. So they have more risk, a higher risk profile, and they're gonna ask you to put more down. Generally 30 to 40% down minimum. Again, because they want to make sure that the asset value doesn't drop too much. Because if you only put five or ten percent down, and they can't go after you personally, they may be stuck with an underwater property, which they generally don't want to do. So you're going to have those two issues. You're also going to have a potential issue of some lenders won't lend to certain states, like New York, California, Vermont, potentially states that have very, very strong uh, tenant protection because it's hard to evict people, and that causes the whole loan profile to be even riskier because you have a tenant in there it's not paying rent hard to evict the borrower is like hey i can't pay your mortgage because the, the tenant's not paying me rent take the asset back and now the lender's stuck trying to evict this person and it could be a very long um drawn out process which no lender wants to deal with so generally it's available we have a whole list of non-recourse lenders they've helped oh thousands of our clients over the last 12 years so that's not a problem. If you're a client of ours, we'll happily provide you a list. Great, great lenders, great people, but you're going to definitely have to pay a few more points than you're used to. You're going to have to put more down, 30, 40% at least. And there are certain states, if the property will be located, that non-recourse lending may not be an option for you. So in that case, you're going to have to go find a friend, right? It can't be a lineal descendant. Can't borrow money from a parent, child, Spouse, daughter-in-law, son-in-law, or any entities controlled by such persons. Obviously, yourself, you can't do. So if you're looking at friends, brothers, sisters, aunts, uncles, cousins, neighbors, third parties. But um, if that's not an option and non-recourse lenders are an option, then you know that, that real estate deal just may not happen for you. So that's the downside. I wish you were able to get like a Freddie or Fannie Mae mortgage. It'd be so much easier. Um, 
but those are the way the rules are. The IRS clearly doesn't want people making IRA investments um, that in any way personally you know, benefits um, or involves them. So that is um, you know, kind of where we stand. So appreciate you guys spending some time with me. That's another ad mail in the bag. So thanks for um, hanging out with me today. It's fun episode and this is a podcast that drops every thursday so you can pick up this podcast wherever you listen to your podcast whether it's apple spotify wherever it is or if you want to watch it on youtube you can also do that ira financial youtube channel check us out we post three of the podcasts i do ad bits ad dim talks on wednesday and ad mail this podcast and three to four videos a week uh including a youtube live which generally is every wednesday 12 noon Eastern Standard Time. Um, you subscribe, you get notification when I go live. And obviously, you can watch at your convenience. Um, lots of fun. If you're interested in the self directed retirement world, uh, great, great, great content, great source of information. And um, you know, I do it for all you guys. So, this is my passion. This is what I love doing educating all of you on the power of the self directed retirement world. And um, just super happy that that so many people enjoy it so have an amazing amazing day thanks for listening and uh, cheers take care